say good morning to our co-hosts on the day, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. Welcome to spring. Well, thank you. I had hoped that at 11.06 last night you would have called I did. to welcome me to but, spring, but you didn't. But your phones were turned off. I couldn't get through to you. You know, you know, that's an interesting point you just made. I'm amazed at how many people don't silence their phones when they go to bed. And I unfortunately find this out because I get here so early. I return email when I have a chance. And people will then say, uh, why are you emailing me at 5.15 in the morning? And I'm like, well, why do you have your phone on at that? <laughs> Should your phone be silenced? Yeah. For the, Mine my, silenced overnight. Yeah. For the truth to tell, I did not try to call you that time, Rob. I'm not up that late at night. I know you're yeah. not. I know you're not completely. Let's also welcome in New York Times bestselling author, the silent assassin or the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Johnny? Silent assassin and social assassin have entirely different meanings. Kind of like both of them. (laughs) Good morning. It doesn't look like springtime at all. Well, it doesn't feel like it this morning either. No. No, it doesn't. So at least it's consistent in that sense. Uh, We are uh, upcoming on May 14th, a primary. On April the 16th and 17th, we'll host a candidate forum. And that will be held at the Berkeley County Commission Chambers, uh, two separate days, eight until noon. Uh, we had hoped to kick that off with a governor's forum with all four candidates. Uh, three had accepted. Attorney General Morrissey was uh, 50-50 and then began suddenly pulling out of every form around the state and has done so on ours as well, declining our invitation to do a forum in his own backyard, I might add, uh, which then causes a domino effect for the rest of the candidates going, well, is he going to do it? Because if he's not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. Are you going to do it? Uh, right now, we know that Mac Warner is f- firmly committed to be here no matter what on the 16th. And with the others, we're just kind of in wait and see mode. But everybody else locally will be featured during those uh, candidate forums, including our first guest this morning, Melissa Power from the Board of Education. Melissa, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Rob. And thank you for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I, I might add, you look very smiley and happy this morning. <laughs> well, I have a lot to smile about these days. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're happy. Yeah. Uh, your seat was the mm-hmm. two-year seat to fill out Dr. Queen's unexpired yes, term. correct. So you run this time on a four-year term. Correct. Okay, why did you decide to run for re-election? Well, it's interesting. Uh when you get into politics, and I hate to say that the Board of Education is political, uh, you start to see things from maybe a different perspective than what you you know had previously, and you start to kind of evaluate a little bit more in depth whether or not you want to maintain that or not. So it took me um, a lot of time and prayer. Uh, do I need to do this? Do I want to do this? Um, how do other people? Uh, you know, feel about it. And I was encouraged by several individuals who were some of my staunch critics <laughs> previously to to continue, um, that they were pleased with what they had seen and the transformation of what had taken place over the last two years, um, as well as the fact that there there was a, a diverse board that we have. Um, in that in that way, I've you know, especially with some of the things that I've been able to bring to the board, I felt that it was a good good idea to continue my tenure with them. Uh, don't ask me if I'm going to run in four years. We're not there yet, <laughs> and I don't know the answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Depends on what the what what things look like, and if I can still bring you know thoughts and ideas and um, you know any additional change that might need to take place as we continue to evolve as a county. I mean, our county has just continued to blossom and grow. So, you know, ev- things are ever evolving. So. When when you ran the first time, yes, uh, you ran as a person who kind of on the outside looking in, mm-hmm. right? That's obviously a different perspective now. Correct. Yes. From the outside looking in, you were critical of certain members of the board who were members yes. at the time. Yes. As you've become somebody now immersed in the policy of the Board of Education, mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on your on the board and what changed, if anything, for you once you learned more about how the inner workings go as opposed to a person from the outside wondering, well, it's common sense. Why don't we do it this way? You know, and that's an interesting concept. So I always look at everything with a common sense lens, um, or at least I try to. Um, sometimes we don't have that option. And I think that was one of the things that really came about 
with my tenure on the board, I was able to attend some uh, training sessions through the West Virginia School Board Association um, in really looking at what the school, the state school board does. And I'm still learning. This is still uh, two years in and I'm still I'm still learning. So by no means am I an expert on everything. Um, and I don't want to be, <laughs> um, you know, there's there are things that I wish we I could change at the state level because it does trickle down into the counties, but that's not where I am and that's not where I feel called. I feel called to be here, uh, you know, at the local level. Um, but that changed some of how I view things. Another one was I started getting into uh, some of the policies and, and procedures that were taking place. And as, as you guys have, I don't know if you've watched any of our school board meetings, we're actually reviewing some of our policies. It, you know, we're actually making sure that they're up to code. Things have changed since maybe the last time that they were revised a few years ago because of state regulations. For codes. example. For example, one of our policies um, actually was slightly out of date uh, when it came to the superintendent. So when we go to do a contract with the superintendent, uh, previous policy was based on old legislation. Now we've reviewed it, updated it, and it is with current legislation for superintendent and the due dates by which we need to submit things to the state. So little things like that, that actually can be pretty crucial because one, it, if they're not up to date, are we violate our, violating our own policies, even though we're following state code? <laughs> so it's just one of those, we're trying to bring things up to date and make sure that everything is, is current. Another thing I think is we've changed personalities. I know that was one of the one of the things that we just talked about, Mr. Shovelfield. Oh, don't call him Mister. He'll think that's just too much look, respect. I yeah, have I'm in the same category. I, he's, he's gonna make come us on. all call him that oh, now. Come on, look, look. You guys have have my utmost respect, especially you, Mr. Shovelfield. There um, is again. Uh, hey, so, say that again. Say, <laughs> turn the volume up where you where you're at. <laughs> um, you know, I'll go get the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things that that really stood out to me is, you know, I didn't know. Jackie and Pat prior to and I, I'd only you know sat out in the audience and watched from afar, um, and it it's it appears it appeared at the time that they were not in touch. Um, they are they are in touch. Uh, have they been able to touch every single employee? No, have I? No. Um, so it's it's one of those things where I might have talked to a couple of employees that they might not have talked to, and I heard something from them. And I think the beauty of, of what we have now is I've talked to a few employees that they might not talk to all the time, and they talk to employees that I don't talk to all the time. And so we come together and we've, we've collaborated, and there's conversations now that might not have taken place before. And, and because of the diverse piece to the board that we have, we have all aspects, all walks of life, or at least, you know, a lot of different walks of life. It's not coming from one one general direction on the board. Billy? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Mr. Stubble. <laughs> <laughs> this formality is, is quite nice, Rob. <laughs> but, you know, I, on the board, I go, I, I, I have to say, there's a, I, I struggle. <laughs> I'll say Damon, and then I'll say Mr. Wright, or I'll say Jackie, and it really should be Miss Long. I mean, I go back and yeah. forth. So I'm trying. I'm a work in progress. Well, I have to call Gilstrap hair Gilstrap, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Just one more formality. Yeah, a couple of years, a couple of years. So uh, when you're running, a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, uh, when you're running, Melissa, there are a group of four of you uh, yes. running, and there was a sense at the time, and you were uh, you were the spokesman for the four. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I would go that far. Well, I just had the louder voice. Well, I think <laughs> that's all. Yeah, well, all of us had a voice. All of us uh, but, don't don't do that. <laughs> you were perceived as the spokesperson. Oh gosh, you're, that's you're not perceived. good. And, and not, not only with a loud voice but I, what you said you had done some research on it mm -hmm. you had done some thought mm -hmm. that's not to say that your colleagues had not as well right but you seem to be able to frame the issues i thought uh, uh quite quite appropriately but still there was a sense of revolution that you're if you forward been elected mm -hmm. you're going to go in and mm -hmm. turn everything around mm -hmm. uh you of the of the four you're the only one elected mm -hmm. uh but as a consequence, I and others have been watching fairly closely. In my sense, Melissa, and this is going to be this whole thing is a compliment to you. Instead of being a bomb thrower, uh, you did what I think anyone should do: you got in, learned, 
make your adjustments after you knew all the facts. Mm-hmm. You did not try to actually go in and destroy. It was yeah. trying to mm-hmm. a a progressive improvement. So, uh, and I've heard other folks echo the same thing about you. So, um, so my uh, uh, my fears of you being a bomb thrower never materialized. Just the opposite. I think you've been a very thoughtful, a very uh, cooperative, a very productive member of what I view to be a. Uh, a quite a quite effective board thank you thank you i appreciate that i it definitely um if anybody knows me personally um they know i'm a learner i love learning i love asking questions and i can tell you that i've learned a lot over the last couple of years i've learned a lot about people i've learned a lot about the system i've learned a lot about um how to navigate a little bit some of the nuances that come about and what what does that actually look like and mean um it's it's been a hard road i can't say it's always been easy um but i have always been open have i been right about some stuff absolutely have i been wrong about some stuff absolutely um and it the only way that you can be successful i think in life in anything that you do is being open to the possibility that you could be absolutely right and you can be absolutely wrong let me just jump in here and yeah. say all it took was her calling you mr stubblefield once <laughs> and then you lead off with a four minute compliment <laughs> i did it was a compliment. how shameless can you be <laughs> because to a simple compliment <laughs> but melissa and i talked about this all uh before off air before we came this on. setup you mean where you <laughs> no, 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 you no, no, no 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 actually i i asked uh the first time i came away feeling i'd ask melissa as hard a series as hard of questions as i've asked most of them there's been a couple of other exceptions uh but it's a uh, but so I have uh, you grilled her. Uh, yeah, I grilled her and yep. I and I thought she handled it well then. But I wanted to have take the opportunity of saying uh, I've been very been, you've been you've done a good job. What Thank I'm you. Saying. Yeah. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I do have some real questions by the way oh, for John Gilstrap to ask. Here I was thinking Gilstrap. maybe this was a different kind of no, interview. No, 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 no. We, have, we have real questions. <laughs> no, go for it. Absolutely. And welcome to this episode of Nice People Doing Happy Things Happily. Um, the, this is a political position, right? And yes. The, and the, the common goal of the Board of Education sure. is to give the best possible education to the kids. So among the, the politicians on a, in a po- political board, what are the friction points? Right? <laughs> what, 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 what are the hot buttons or the, or the, or the hot spots among, among the board members, which actually oh. separates... Mm. Why why vote for one over another? Yeah. And, and you don't have to get as specific okay. as you want, but in terms of issues, where are the disagreements? Well, I, you know what? One of the things I really appreciate about our particular board, and I've heard uh, several other people in the state legislature, as, um, as well as um, other roles within our state, say that our county is the most diverse and the most cooperative. One of the things we always try to do is we always, and, and I commend this to um, President Murphy, even though he doesn't like it when I <laughs> say his title, he likes to just be just member Murphy. Um, but but when President Murphy um, took that position, he made it abundantly clear that he wanted every single voice to be heard on the board. We were all elected by the constituents and we all had an equal say um, about a matter have we disagreed on things absolutely is there a high contentious uh uh topic what are those areas no we don't okay we actually don't and and i think that is because we've all laid down our swords so to speak so we all laid them down and we have we're talking to each other and not at each other well, then, then that brings up the question. Sure. Um, we, there, we had a bunch of neighbors over to the house last night, and one of one of my neighbors is very concerned mm-hmm. that she's having a hard time finding a place to send her kids to school because sure. the the flight of teachers out yes. of Berkeley County. And yes. I don't know if she's listening right now, but on her behalf, I will ask, how are we going to stop this? And it's got to be more than money. Because it, it, it has is. to be more than money because we don't have the money. No matter how much we throw at it, we don't have enough to, to, to be loud. And- so I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not just money. It's, it's student behavior. Um, it's legislation and code, whether it's federal or state, that tie hands when it comes to um, how we can actually discipline within the schools. 
Um, and then there are as other aspects to it. Um, PEIA did not help when when that came down and, and actually increased substantially for, for our teachers. Um, one of the things that I uh, do not appreciate, um, well, let me rephrase that because I'm going to try and be nice. There is, a, there is a certain senator that I am not a fan of. You don't like Greg Blair. We know I that. do not like him whatsoever. When you compare, do you not like him personally or you don't like him professionally? I have not had a, quote, personal uh, conversation with him. It's always been from a legislative nature. And he and I, he, he lost me when he said that uh, he doesn't answer to the people. And I sat there and I went, yeah, you do, uh, because we voted you in. So if we vote you in and you're going down to Charleston and you're not uh, hearing what we're saying, that's a problem. Because I feel like there's an echo chamber down in, down in Charleston and that's where he stays. Are you saying he told you personally he doesn't answer to the people? Yes. And it, was it in a letter or email or text No, it was or personal personal face-to-face -face at the Republican, the Lincoln dinner uh, two years ago when, when we were running. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have a problem with that. Um, I also have a problem with some of the comments he has made since. Um, there was a comment that he made when we were doing, um, we were working with legislators. All the legislators, very open to hearing things and then he made some insinuations about our staff, uh, about our teachers, that I thought was incredibly rude um, and uncalled for. For example, he called them. He equaled the, equated them to Dairy Queen workers. So, I don't appreciate that. They're not Dairy Queen workers, uh, and to 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 insinuate that that's that that's a problem. It's a hard line for me. Now, was he trying to give an example? Uh, was he trying to give an example? Maybe. But you lost me when you gave the delivery of that message. You lost me. Um, there are things that we could absolutely do in our state to help our educators, and he's the he's he's the spearhead of this because he 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 can go down there and he can he he can advocate for change, and I'm not hearing the change. Um, we need we need increased pay. We need. Um, the ability to to get more funding, our uh, the state formula for for um, for our schools is it's not good. It's not good in in the in the slightest for a growing county like us. Um, so we need change. And so there's that aspect that when you try to talk to him, he's he's like, oh no, it's it's fine. And we're like, no, no, really isn't. Um, there's. There's there's so many different aspects. So I'm not I'm not a fan of Craig Blair. I'm not a fan. No, I, I want Craig's not here to defend himself. No, so absolutely not. To, to this is just me. To answer yeah. back on some of those things, mm -hmm. right? Just generic answers. There there have been I think five or six teacher pay raises in the last uh, during the Justice Administration. Uh, I think all of those have been roughly Pennies. ballparked at five percent apiece. When you're, uh, it, well, okay. I'll finish. Yeah. And no, then, sure. in addition, uh, there has been a lot of work done on school choice, hope scholarship, and that sure. sort of thing. That sure. while it may not directly benefit the public schools, and uh, some mm -hmm. say, sure. some say, uh, in general, overall for parents' choice of education, mm -hmm. which I think was one of your things when you ran as well. I, yeah, and I still advocate for for school it, choice. It, it certainly has made that aspect of it easier for parents because they mm -hmm. certainly have more choice now than sure. they did eight years ago. Sure. Would you agree with that? To a point. So, have there been raises for 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 teachers? Okay, let's let's say that there's pay raises, but then you get PEIA, where there that that increase is, is is huge. And then when you look at it from okay, well we lower taxes. Well, you might have lowered taxes, but PEIA increased, so now they're still actually bringing home the same amount, if not less, depending upon what kind of family format you've got at home, whether you, it's just you and your spouse or just you, or you've got a family. So you've got different various stages here, and we've tried talking to him, and he's just, he's very close-minded to that. He's, we've said, we'll, we'll provide information to you, and no.
Billy, he's, he's just yeah. close-minded to it. Uh, this is taking down a different path. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been very enlightening. What about the State Board of Education? Mm -hmm. What's the relationship uh, with the local school board, State Board of Education, and are they, can they coexist? They, they're coexisting now, but are they effectively coexisting? Do you want my, okay, I want your real you, you opinion. want my yeah. real opinion. Yeah. I don't like the State Board of Education because they are all appointed. They're not voted on. They're not voted positions. So the state appointed Board of Education, um, and <laughs> I think some of the regulations that they have handed down is very, very difficult um, to to work at when it comes to in the classroom. It's it. it let, let me give you an example. If a teacher teaches for, for a few years, gets their master's degree in, uh, let's say, um, um, administration, and they want to have that career path of administration, and they work their way up into maybe the central office. After so many years working in the central office, you've, you're so far removed from the classroom that you can't necessarily always see the nuances that come down the pike from different rules, different policies, different procedures, and how it's actually imp implemented in the classroom. They're not seeing it day to day. And so what they might consider to be maybe a good policy might not actually be good in its delivery. The, the ability to see it out in the classrooms is, is, is different. So the teachers are, you know, might, might feel bogged down. They might not, I don't know, but depending on what policy you're talking about, but, um, and some of that is directed down from the State Board of Education. Yeah, right now, State Board of Education has an administrative role. Mm -hmm. They have an oversight role. They, they have do. a policy role. Uh, they have several roles. Mm -hmm. uh, should, should the State Board of Education be reformatted, refocused to concentrate on just, say, oversight? Uh, and can you can we function without a state board of education? Oh, I, yeah. I don't even want to go down that road, honestly, Mr. Stubblefield. Well, uh, as far as that is concerned, I, I'm not I'm not sure I want to go down the road if we if we don't have a state board of education. What I would say is, I would because of of how the last two years have been, where I have been on the other side and seen it. What I would love is to shadow, to have a, the ability to go and see what they're seeing, to see from their perspective. That's one of the biggest things I've learned in the last two years is look at it from a different perspective and then that might give clarity. But at the same time, I would hope that they are open to the perspective that we have of our county is so huge and it's growing and we, there's no stop. Well, Insight. one of the things you're saying is there is limited communication between mm -hmm. the local school board and state board of education. Mm -hmm. It's limited. I mean, yeah. do we reach out to them? Yes. Have I re have I ever gotten a response back? No. So I stopped. <laughs> why? I mean, why? Am I, I, I mean, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. I so, think there's a yeah. certain madness to it. Is it a nine-year term to the mm -hmm. Board of Education? Yes. I mean, nine years. It's and nine. You're it's, it's nine so that it outlasts a governor. But it still, becomes, it becomes less political that way as the theory behind it. I know. It's okay, just a long that's time a bunch a of hogwash. I mean, I'm not telling you I bought into point. it. I'm just I know, you what I know. It's me. a bunch of hogwash. Hey, I've got a minute left to tell people why they should reelect you to the Board of Education. <laughs> oh. I don't mean in my life. You know, I just meant in the sense. Only a minute? Okay. Uh, you know, if you have seen over the last couple of years um, the evolution and the ability for all of us to work together, I think that is a huge um, throw in, in the hat for um, for our Board of Education as well as myself. Um, you can go to powerforboe.com. Is that number four or F-O-R? F-O-R. Um, and you can take a look at, at my, you know, my platform there. Um, do we have some things to, to work on? Yes. To um, Con we've got to continue some of the work that we've been doing. I know that there is a level of frustration from um, our staff within the schools, you know, and, and what I can tell them is we're working on it. We are aware. We hear you. Um, not everything can be said out loud yet, um, but please, please go out, vote, um, and understand that, that the current board that is, that is in place, we hear you. We see you. Listen. And we thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much for being here today. You're always fun to speak with. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's fun to be here, too. I mean, I've got Mr. Stubblefield. I've got you, Rob. 
and then I've got the star of the show. Hair gill strap. <laughs> there you go. Why does it always come down to hair with you? Because <laughs> you don't have any, and I'm losing mine. <laughs> losing. Losing. I like that. How, how very, how very self-congratulatory. <laughs> 